please do. Start hanging on cans. Alright. Uh huh. Oh, hello. Hello. No, I don't want to exit. I want to shrink this down. And tonight, today night, we're going to compile or attempt to compile OpenSSL 1.1.1G. Um, in a previous video somewhere out there, I just did uh, compiling Perl 5 for Windows. This is, of course, compiling OpenSSL 1.1.1G for Windows. This is an empty directory right here I created to possibly build in, if I don't forget that's there. This is some weird random file. I don't know what PAX Global headers are. That OpenSSL, maybe that's like a hash of 52 files and that's a hash or something. Um, but they just dump that off in the root tree. But here's the real source code directory. You can get OpenSSL from going to launch CMonkey web browser, which is based on Netscape 6 with basically the Firefox engine underneath it. It also comes with other fancy things like a, uh, where are the fancy things? It includes a browser, which we're seeing right now. It includes, you know, basically like the equivalent of a Thunderbird mail news group reader, composers, like of what you see, what you get, editor, if I remember correctly, a dress book, which I've never used, and an IRC chat program. So that's pretty cool. And you can access all those down here too. It's back when, you know, the internet was supposed to be a suite of software. But anyway, that's that, just to let you know what's going on with that. And if you really want to know what version I'm using, um, that's what version right there. And if you're using a Mozilla based browser and you want to know what your build config is, you can do that about build config. And then you can see all the cool details. Wow, this was uh, compiled with MinGW, huh? And uh, you can see these were the command lines that it looks like they use what? It says MinGW target, but then it says the compiler was the Microsoft compiler. I don't know what's going on anymore. Maybe they did both. Maybe they used the MinGW environment but invoked the uh, Microsoft C compiler. That's a pretty wild mix there. But this isn't what we're dealing with today. We're dealing with open SSL. And if you go to OpenSSL.org, you can download the source by clicking on Downloads. And then you'll scroll down. And it looks like that one right there. You'll grab that file and save it somewhere and open it. If you don't have a program to open it with, you can open it with uh, 7, where is it, 7-zip. And that's available from 7-zip.org. And you can get the, uh, what do we have here, alpha version. So this is more like not exactly rock stable solid version. And this one is supposedly this 19.0. So if you're using 64-bit Windows, go ahead and grab that one. And if you're unsure or using 32-bit Windows, go ahead and grab that one. And that should be a self-installer. I think they have other options for packages too. So you can come in here and get like portable versions, da da da. Um, one thing I thought is funny is I noticed that the LZMA1 sort of uh, compression algorithm seems to work better than LZMA2 and it's way more backward compatible. So in my experience anyway, I, I would have to think there's some situations where LZMA2 is better. But to this day, I use strictly LZMA1 ultra compression. So just another little side bust. So anyway, once you get all that cool stuff, then we can open SSL, dump it into a directory. I mean, even if you just expand it into your downloads directory, whatever, you might want to delete that PAX file after you do whatever with it. And then go in here, and it, just like with most Unixy type source code programs, you're going to want to target for a readme and install and edit those files or look at them oh you might have to if you're um if you can't just double click something without an extension and have it handle it right you'll probably want to open a plain text editor and then navigate to this file and open it that way okay looks like i've already been in here so this is from april 2020 of this year we're in september 2020 so to speak, according to the Gregorian calendar. 
and then we'll just skim through here it's kind of interesting it still includes SSL 3 which I think is considered no bueno but there's probably for back compatible reasons you may want to have that so I, that's why I'd assume they'd implement that of course like most stuff today needs TLS like 1.2 or 1.3 is what they recommend they being whoever so here's all the libraries and stuff it's going to install and I like how they actually pit with platform specific naming because it may not be libssl it might just be like ssl.dll or whatever it is depending on your platform once it's all said and done and right here of course they tell you notes installed so uh, we'll want to read at least install and notes dot whatever and even for windows we'll want to read that plain old install file that's not always the case but this is nice and short and sweet boilerplatey so we'll close that out go to install see what that has in store looks like I've been in here before too so to install you will need a let me just hit control home okay to install you will need a make implementation got it Perl 5 got it as of a day or two ago the Perl module text template Ooh, I don't know if I have that an ANSI C compiler got it a development environment in the form of development libraries and C header files I pretty sure I got all that and a supported operating system cool so we'll also need it's kind of funny they say obviously Android NDK right there for notes Android which is like really is that obvious <laughs> I think all these other ones are just as obvious aren't they but anyway I'll shut it up and this is just them walking through all of the syntaxy stuff like anytime you see that buck sign there the snake on the stick then you know that they're talking about a command prompt most specifically a Unix type Linux Mac OS whatever command prompt logged in as a regular user and not as root but I think a lot of these types of instructions still continue to give root instructions anyway with the snake on the stick we won't go over this it's pretty much self-explanatory and then down here oops down here we have the typical config make make test make install which is good to see we're going to be doing this window style thing so we're going to be doing only pick one of the targets from configure so if you're really unsure you probably I'll just jump ahead and say you probably want to pick that one that will give you the 32 bit that will be the most portable if you want to go back and run on XP or something like that and uh, this one I'm assuming is going to be for I'm assuming this VC means visual C and the win 64 obviously means what it sounds like and then this a I think would mean AMD 64 and then this I I think would mean like itanium 64 for the that old school first generation Intel 64 bit thing that most people probably won't be using and this probably means some version of Windows that nobody ever uses anymore and nobody ever used but anyway so it's the same procedure just and make and make test install and then a Perl capital C configure with the target behind it you need to have the appropriate permissions to write to the installation directory that's a good point especially on the Linux well I guess on any platform these days if any of these steps fail see the details below Windows open SSL is where it should go sometimes these files are dated and you know it could end up in a different directory but supposedly of course if the documentation is still in sync it should go to program files open SSL or if you're on a 64-bit platform and you install the 32-bit open SSL then it probably will go to this program files folder right here okay installation directory appropriate open VMS that's interesting don't usually see those instructions in there a bunch of extra stuff usually you get these extra options if like on a Linux platform if you did dot slash configure um, dash dash help or whatever that's what this is looking like to me so that's cool because then we can just skip past it all where are we at here installation in detail don't like details okay for your system manually Perl configure 
oh, for bu building outside the source tree, I want to try this. So I built this OpenSSL directory like that. I should, in theory, be able to go into that directory. And maybe, I don't know, it looks like they're saying to use an absolute path to the uh, source tree. But I was thinking maybe try just a relative dot dot slash kind of path. So make directory temp cd to that Perl path to configure target options. And I'm just going to, I guess, leave the options at their default. Troubleshooting, do a make clean or an end make clean before you try and build again. A no ASM option. Basically, get rid of any optimizations, it sounds like. You can do a, if some tests fail, after that do an end make test. You must run the test from an unprivileged account or disable your privileges temporarily if your platform allows it. Good to know. If some tests fail, look at the output. There may be reasons for the failure that isn't a problem in OpenSSL itself, like a malfunction with Perl. You may want increased verbosity that can be accomplished like this. So you're basically just setting that verbose flag, turning that on, setting it to a non-zero value, I assume, a 1. And if you want to run just one or a few specific tests, that can be handy if you decide to, like, go that extra mile and patch up any tests that might be broken. List tests. Wow. It's nice to see all this stuff about testing. Okay, if everything tests, okay, install it with nmake install. Note that in order to perform the install step above, you need to have appropriate permissions to write to the installation directory. We already know that. The, uh, the above commands will install all the software components in this directory tree under prefix. So you can use this dash dash prefix to change that, obviously. I don't know what the syntax on Windows might be specifically, but... Unix bin. Here's the default. Let's see if we go down here to like a Windows thing. Is there a Windows thing? Did I pass it? If I did, I don't even care. Right now, anyway. Unless something goes wrong, then I really care. Then I'll be back reading this whole file word for word. Perl, the name of the Perl executable, and all this other cool stuff. Make targets all clean, depend, install. Only install the software components. Only install the documents. Only install the HTML documents. Build and run the tests. Update. If you're developing a patch. Tests in detail. Wow, this is very thorough. I like it. I don't like the idea of reading it all right this second. Notes on multi-threading. Multi For some systems, OpenSSL, capital C, configure script, knows what compiler options are needed to generate a library that is suitable for multi-threaded applications. On these systems, support for multi-threading is enabled by default. Use the no-threads option to disable. This should never be necessary. On other systems, to enable support for multi-threading, you will have to specify at least two options, threads and a system-dependent option. Okay. Notes on shared libraries, this might be important. For most systems, the OpenSSL configure script knows what is needed to build shared libraries. For libcrypto and libssl, on these systems, the shared libraries will be created by default. This can be suppressed and only static libraries created by using the no shared option. On systems where OpenSSL does not know how to build shared libraries, the no shared option will be forced and only static libraries will be created. So, Ours should know how to build shared libraries, I would assume. On Windows, build with Microsoft Visual C or MinGW. Shared libraries are named libcrypto version DLL and libssl version DLL for 32-bit windows or with a dash x64 for 64-bit windows or IA64 for IA64 windows. With Microsoft Visual C, the import libraries are named libcrypto.lib and libssl.lib, while with MinGW, they are named libcrypto.dll.a and libssl.dll.a. 
notes on random number generation. Supposedly that Libre SSL that has come out in recent years is a fork. Um, I don't know if I trust the Libre people. Back in the day, I would have said, yeah, I trust them over everybody else, but and these days I just don't. I think I trust OpenSSL more. Actually, I don't trust anybody. But apparently they said that the uh, random number generation and some stuff like that was the reason they forked. They didn't feel like it was handled properly in OpenSSL. But anyway, availability of cryptographically secure random numbers is required for secret key generation. OpenSSL provides several options to seed the internal C spurring. If not properly seeded, the internal C spurring will refuse to deliver random bytes and a PRNG not seeded error will occur. Well, getting an error, I guess, is better than not getting an error and think everything went all right. The seeding method can be configured using the with rand seed option, which can be used to specify a comma separated list of seed methods. However, in most cases, SSL will choose a suitable default method, so it is not necessary to explicitly provide this option. Good enough for us. All right, so we're gonna go way back up to the top and we should probably check out notes.win but I wanted to get this to this area so that we could refer to that. So let's go here to notes.win, take a peek at that. It doesn't look like it's associated. So I'll do try an app on this PC, and I'll use this for all Win files. I don't care. And where's Notepad? You may not, I have Notepad replaced with that Pad thing, which properly handles Unix style line endings. Um, if your stuff looks like garbage in Notepad, then you probably want to use like WordPad or some programming editor or some, probably not Microsoft Word, but uh, slight, anything better than Notepad. Notes for the Windows platform in one big chunk paragraph. Windows targets can be classified as quote unquote native, ones that use Windows API directly and quote unquote hosted, which rely on POSIX compatible layer. Native targets are Visual C, where VC stems from abbreviating Microsoft Visual C compiler. Thanks for the tip there, fellow fellows at OpenSSL. And MinGW64. Uh, Hosted platforms are SIGWIN and MSYS2, or it looks like optionally to MSYS or MSYS2, even though the latter is not directly supported by OpenSSL team, it's number one popular choice for building MinGW targets, and I agree. In the nutshell, MinGW builds are always cross-compiled. On Linux and SIGWIN, they look exactly as such and require dash dash cross-compile prefix option, while on MSYS and MSYS2, it's solved rather by placing GCC that produce... Anyway, you can read this if you want. Um, you'll want to go for probably... MS, they call it MSYS2, but, uh, well, MSYS and SIGWIN, if you build in those environments, you're going to build for stuff that's hosted in those environments, usually. But if you build in the MinGW environment, it's just using that tool chain to build a Windows program that, you know, it will have a dependency on, like, lib something, lib MinGW or something like that. It will probably have a couple dependencies like that, but... Um, MinGW is what you do if you want to build something where people don't know you built it with MinGW and you don't want to use Microsoft's tool chain. If you want to build something that feels much more native for people who really look under the hood at stuff, then you might want to do Microsoft's build chain. Like if I do, if I build like a command line tool, I'll usually favor Microsoft's build tool but if I build like if you're building like a big application that's got like multiple files it's not like a single executable then I would personally probably prefer the MinGW stuff and then if I'm building something that I'm basically just taking something that's ordinarily Linux Unix maybe even Mac OS like it, it totally expects that environment and I just want to run it on Windows in a pure Unix like environment then I'll use SIGWIN and MSYS and first I'll check they provide a handful of packages themselves, so I'll check if it's even, per especially MSYS. But yeah, I'll check if they provide it first, and you know, like if I wanted Python on MSYS or whatever, I'm probably just going to use their Python, but you know, if that wasn't new enough or something, I might build a newer one. Python doesn't build as smoothly as it seems like it should. 
I remember even, I think I might have a video of building it on Linux, and that just seemed like more of a, software should not be hard to build on Linux. And it was crazy freaking impossible on Windows. I mean, I wouldn't say impossible, but it's one of those things where you basically have to use, like, they don't follow a smooth standard of how they do their builds, so you're basically stuck with, like, whatever the build team's using at that moment in time. <laughs> and it doesn't necessarily sync up with the documentation or anything, and it's just whatever. So anyway, this is all the requirements and detail for Visual C builds. And Perl, they recommend active state, but we built it ourselves, or Strawberry. You can just grab the Perl source code, and if you can't compile that yourself, then you're probably, I've never, I don't think, compiled anything that was easier to compile in my life. That's, you know, more than like Hello World. So Visual C compiler, I'm using the, uh, and, you know, like I said, we're in 2020, and I'm still using this Windows SDK 7.1. I recommend it for anything that it will compile, that, you know, it will work with. And otherwise, you probably want build tools 2015 or higher. I think that, you know, I usually hate the newest Microsoft products, but I found that build tools 2019, um, they'll, you know, as long as your system will run it, which I think is Windows 7 and higher, and then you should be all right with those and maybe the path of least resistance. And then the NetWide Assembler, NASM, available from here is required. Note that NASM is the only supported. I should have that in my path, I would think. Let's see, where is NASM? Could not find it. I don't have NASM. I'm pretty sure I do, actually. I think I installed it using their Windows installer. Maybe I deleted it and never put it back, but I installed it. Oh, cool, nothing matches my search, that's good. So we'll just go grab it, um, NASM. Now this makes me wanna build this from scratch too, but I'm not gonna. So NASM.org, no, it's not this one. Don't fall for that. It's this NASM.us, I'm pretty sure. Okay, and we of course want that latest stable version 2.15.05. And we'll grab the Win64 version. And this is that installer. I wouldn't do that. It's weird. It gives you like start menu, window menu shortcuts and stuff, but they're like pointless. And I don't think it even pits an ASM in your path. I just remember thinking like I will never use the installer again. So. I won't. I'm just going to grab this zip file and then I'm going to, oh, whatever. I don't care about saving it, so I'll just open with. And then I'm just going to go ahead and extract this to C colon backslash. You might not get away with that if you don't have proper permissions or you might not feel comfortable with that. Extract it wherever you want and just do what I do, but adapt it to wherever you extract it. Okay, so. That was in C colon, da da da. So we'll do rename. Um, you could use PowerShell if you want. I I don't like PowerShell, so I just use regular CMD prompt. Um, rename NASM tab. Whoa, there was an N I already have an NASM folder, don't I? CD NASM. I thought so. I always have NASM. Well, now I have a newer one, I guess. NASM version. 214 goodbye 214 so I'll do an RM DIR and uh, forward slash s r oh man I just used this yesterday or something I can't remember RM DIR forward slash s forward slash q and then NASM and then uh, this is how easy it is to update NASM then I'll do a rename NASM tab to NASM and if we go CD NASM, then it's there with less stuff. Oh, I guess I'd separately downloaded the HTML documentation last time or whatever from the website. Let's go back one. So there's this docs folder, and then there's a PDF, plain text, and there's the HTML, which I don't know how. Is there like a zip file out here with it? Maybe it's um, 
in this X doc thing or something. I don't know. Well, whatever. It's only a meg. That'll take a second. Let's look. Doc. H yeah, this gives you all of it. This X doc folder will give you the PDF, the plain text, everything. So those are your options, or you can just browse it online. All right. So now we have that. So I'll close this out. We know we're cool there. And then we can get the faster algorithms because if it doesn't, you know, that way, in theory, the um, everything should be faster because it's not using a high level language. It's just like pretty much almost directly telling the machine, the CPU, how to handle it. The default installation directories are derived from the environment variables. We're going to be compiling for Win64A, I believe. Program file 16432. Weird. Okay, whatever. Also note that these directories are usually write protected even for even if your account is administrator. To work around that, start the command by right clicking and choosing run as administrator before running and make install so you'll want to launch your command prompt like we'll do the full build we'll do the test and then you may need to um, rerun your command window as a uh, administrator to be able to do the install properly is what they're saying of course but the thing to me is like they really shouldn't be screwing around with the program files directory unless they're providing an uninstaller that's the whole thing so you might even if you have to go back and do you might want to set your prefix to uh, just C colon backslash open SSL because I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it what it is I guess which kind of grosses me out that's what that NASM thing does too if you install it with their installer it does the opposite or whatever but officially the program files directory is reserved for programs that know how to uninstall themselves and you, you're never that's why you're not supposed to that's why it's protected with the even for the administrator group or unless you're administrator group right because they don't want people willy-nilly going in there if you're going to do stuff willy-nilly go do it somewhere else and just remember where you do it and add that to your path if you need to okay so shell environment yeah let's go ahead and try and change the prefix just for kicks get it do it right link in your application i don't even care i don't want to read all this stuff okay maybe i'll glance over the linking So this is more like using the resulting stuff, I'm assuming. Yeah, this is how to link with the static libraries. Okay, it's getting a little bit ahead. It'd be nice if instead of like talking about everything in the world at once, if they just had like Windows install instructions and then Windows library after install using instructions, but with better names, of course. Okay, that's all that. Um, I'll just grab this top line here, copy it, and then I will go, I'm going to open my uh, Windows SDK 7.1 command prompt window. If you're using one of the newer Windows SDKs, you'll navigate to uh, either Visual C build tools if you've just installed the, the build tools for the command line or maybe Visual Studio, and you'll pick the one, if you're on 64-bit Windows, which is most likely you'll pick the x64 native build or the x64 native tools here and if you want to cross compile down to 32 bit you'll pick the x60 anything ending with x86 you can pick maybe this one would be ideal and if you're on 32 bit platform oh come on where do we go here if you're on a 32 bit platform you'll want to pick the uh x86 native tools or x86 native build tools command prompt and if you you'll want to make sure pearls in your path too so what you do is go uh, and an ASM so let me get this styled in and if you want to get your command prompt like yours probably isn't even as big as that one you can go to properties and then you can change everything in here. I probably should make mine a little bit less high. So you can set the window size. I got 115 by 50. And then your width, 
if you don't want to have a scroll bar down here permanently, make sure your width lines up with your window size for your buffer width size. Um, but on the screen buffer size, you'll want to make sure your scroll back buffer is like five or 10,000 lines big so that you can scroll back if you have an error or just want to see what happened and not stare at the screen the whole time. Okay. So I'm going to click OK. And here we'll. I'll type where, that's the word, the command in Windows to sort of show you where in the path something might be in where Perl. It can't find the given pattern. Well, I know I installed Perl from source in the C backslash Perl directory. Oh, it won't let me tab complete to show you. I'm used to Linux. So I'll just do a DIRC backslash Perl. So that's where all that's at, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say path equals, and then do the uh, I'll do the original path, which is percent capital P A T H E percent, and then a semicolon, and then C colon backslash Perl, and a semicolon, and then C colon backslash N A S M. Oh, actually, don't forget to put the bin, bin, and then N A S M. N A S M. You don't have to do the bin. It looks like using the tab completion there. So that will give us our original path first of whatever it is right now, followed by Perl bin, followed by CNASM, and it will check them in that order. And I probably should have done this set ENV if you're using the Windows 7.1 command prompt, uh, Windows SDK 7.1 or 7 whatever command prompt you'll need to do this. So set ENV, you want to do a release build most likely, and then if you want the x64 build, make sure to change that to x64. And you can probably set this last flag for anything besides IA64. Should probably work. I'm going to set it for Windows 7. If you're unsure, set it for Windows 7. If you're trying to run back to like Windows 2000 XP, set it for that. For XP, should I think XP slash XP or even slash Win7, I think will produce executables all the way back to 95. All right, double check that line, hit enter. Now let's see if Perl is still in the path. I doubt it. Nope. But I can just hit up until I get that line again, and now I can do Perl minus minus version, and we can see there's Perl and or your Perl might be in like Perl 64 if you had active state install it. Um, and then NASM minus minus version. And there we have NASM 215.05. All right, so we're dialed to there. Now let's go back here, make sure I still have this in the copy buffer thing. Paste that in there. And I'm gonna get rid of everything. I'm assuming I might have skimmed past it, but I didn't see anything about specifically if this is the right one so looks like it should be so it's Perl capital C configure VC dash win 64 a here we go can't open Perl script configure oh huh. I'm doing it from the Windows 7.1 directory or whatever you know so what we need to do is navigate the uh, this command prompt window to our source directory and mine, yours probably isn't, mine's in CD source, CD, open SSL, and then it's in the just open SSL version number directory. There we go. But what I didn't want to do was build it in there. I wanted to try, I did a MK, you can do MK, DIR, whatever you want to name it, and I named mine open SSL build. So I'm going to go in there, it's an empty directory as you can see, and I'm going to type that hit up a few times to get back to that line, but this configure script is going to be in dot dot backslash open SSL one, no, open SSL dash one dot one dot one G backslash, okay. So that dot dot you could replace with an absolute path if you want to. I just usually I can get away with this, so I'm going to try and get away with it. And building other programs. Configure option using OS specific C configuration. All right, it's thinking. What do we 
have here? I'll right click the taskbar and pick task manager. I think control shift escape will give it to you also. And we can see there's Perl taking almost a full CPU core and not much memory. It's been successfully configured. If you encounter a problem while building, please open an issue in GitHub and include the output from the following command. If you're new to SSL, you might want to consult the troubleshooting section. All right, so now we can just do end make if you're using the Microsoft tool chain. Otherwise, it'd just be make probably. And there it goes. It's off to the races. I don't know how long this will take. I w would imagine some cryptographic y stuff could take a while to compile, so I just, I don't know. Perl compiled quick, it compiled in like 12 minutes or something, so who knows. So, what I'm going to do is this is typical compile screen. I'm just going to pause the video so that just in case it does take a really long time because it could potentially take hours I don't think it will but on my clock I'm showing 848 and I'll try and keep listening to the CPU fan and catch it before too long I always forget to time my builds you can time them by uh... there's a timer pro I guess there's no built-in timer thing in Windows you can time them by searching Stack Overflow for a way to, a good way to do it. There was a program called Time It, I want to say, but I think that was like 32-bit Windows only or something. It was in like one of the power packs. But that'd be a good programming project is just make your own little timer thing. They just literally all it would have to do is like invoke a process, like mark the time, and then invoke a process, and then once it gets the signal that that process is done running, then mark the time again and find the difference between those times easier said than done sometimes sometimes it's tricky i always say there's nothing trickier than dates and times calculating dates and times than there is calculating times and dates if i even said that right dates and times is like the hardest thing to deal with um because you know just crossing like a midnight threshold for example that's just one of a zillion problems crossing uh time zone thresholds all sorts of stuff can come up but anyway it would be a cool project to do um, I don't think it's the biggest deal in the world I'm gonna pause this video okay apparently it finished but I didn't realize it I was looking at the screen and I was like is it gonna keep going so I don't know how long it took but it didn't seem to take very long okay so that was after running you can hit it the up arrow if you forget what you run we run and make alone which does the main build and now I'm going to do and make test. You could probably just skip this part, but I'm going to do it anyway. This will probably take a while. It took a long time on Perl. Relatively long time. So I just ran and make test. Just kicking in the Visual Studio program maintenance utility. And it looks like it's already running tests. And the tests look a lot like the Perl style ones and it seems to be going good <clears throat> excuse me so I'm gonna pause it and then I will come back when the tests are finished running with a quick update on that and also the install procedure okay so what happened was a lot of things it is now the next day dare I say First of all, I I just I don't even want to say all the things that have happened. There must be a reason why I cannot complete this video. I have completed and installed and tested OpenSSL with totally perfect test, totally perfect everything, but somewhere along the line, I disconnected my microphone and continued recording in silence. So that video, the one you were watching, which is now merged into this one, is no bueno. It's no good. It it uh, it went silent, so I had to redo it. So then I redid everything and tried to include all the pertinent stuff. And I, uh, I don't know why I'm even telling you this. I could just go about it and not even explain, but it's just been quite eventful. 
then I ran out of hard, what, I don't know. I, every, it's like one thing after another. I ran out of hard drive space. Da, 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 da. Um, anyway, here we go. So, and I'd also forgotten to set up the prefix directories, install the Perl modules and all that. And I kept going back and simulating that experience. So I'm going to try and do it all rapid speed right now. Check this out. This looks cool. I just, anyway, okay. So pretend like I was right where we left off because in your world we are. And so now I need to do an inmate clean. So on the positive note, this gives an example, a good situation, good context to why you might want to run inmate clean. So you screw everything up like I did, run inmate clean. It can't find all this stuff because I actually have already deleted my build directory. And I just ran Perl configure to try and get a little uh, little bit of stuff, a little bit of fodder in there for it to clean up. But anyway, you'll run in make clean. And in theory, after that's all done, you'll probably have something like that. And what you'll want to do is run Perl and then that configure script. Of course, I have my build directory as its own directory. And I apologize if I repeat myself or minnow anything because at this point I've recorded so many versions of this video that I don't know what I said and what I didn't anymore. Okay, and then the configure visual C win 64 or whatever is appropriate for you with the AMD 64. And here's the key prefix equals C colon open. This can be any directory that you have write permissions to. If you have administrator access, then you will log in as an administrator, or not even log in. You'll just open a command prompt as administrator by going to your developer command prompt is the one you'll need to open again, and you'll right-click it and say run as administrator. Only for the install process, not right now. You should be a regular user. You shouldn't see administrator up here right now. So open SSL, otherwise it will install the program files which is bad. Program files is only for programs that can uninstall themselves and OpenSSL can't uninstall itself. Plus it has a space in the path, which is bad for sometimes for libraries that are widely used, especially multi-platform style libraries because of reasons. And uh, so that's that, that's the main prefix. And then there's also this one that they sort of a little more obscure, OpenSSL dir. And that one normally goes into program files, common files, SSL, and that's like certs and configuration stuff like that. So we're going to go ahead and pit that under the OpenSSL umbrella by pitting it like this. And if you want it to look all pretty and cased like that, then be sure and type it like that. Because however you type it is how it's going to create that directory. And that's how it's going to look in your Explorer folder display. And then SSL for that. So we have Perl, the configure script, the build type or target or whatever you want to call it, and the prefix and the OpenSSL dir. OpenSSL, checking the spelling here. Looks good. And I'm going to run that. So this is after running an make clean because we want to clean out that version that didn't have the right prefixes. Because program files just, I mean, if you want to install it there, go for it but I would highly recommend against it. So I'm going to pause the video and then when I come back, I should be at the point where I remember to install the Perl modules. Oh, actually I got to run and make, I'm glad I didn't waste any time with that and make by itself. Well, actually let's just go ahead. Yeah. Run and make. I don't even think you need to install those Perl modules unless you're going to run the test. But anyway, if your build's going good, it should look something like that. That's the typical uh, status bar, so to speak, of it, what a build at the command line looks like. Whether you're on Linux, Windows, Mac, Game Boy, I don't know. Anyway, see you soon. Okay, finished with the NMake build, and now the Perl module stuff. So. That would be CPANs, kind of like PIP or NPM or whatever for Perl. Maybe not quite as fancy, but it will get the job done. So we do a CPAN 
minus I to install, and then the modules that we needed. Or in the C source um, open SSL. Then we can go down here to Perl notes. And we need the uh, test more module, so I'll copy that. And you'll need to make sure and be in the same developer SDK command prompt thing or at least have your path set because it will probably want to run and make and I've already installed the module so uh, there should be a bunch more stuff it should take longer and stuff should fly by on your screen but that's just basically saying hey it's already up to date but that's the command that needs to be run and then this one as well text template and that one I have them all already installed and it's not an easy process necessarily to uninstall Perl modules they're not supposed to be that big and a big a deal but I basically would have to delete and reinstall Perl or use a third-party utility and I'm just not interested in doing all that and then one more that may be necessary because um, the comp T test when I'd ran that earlier it failed when I ran that on the video that I didn't record sound for so if you search out Perl comp dot T which was the failing test the number one result should be this 70 test comp T waits for input from standard in it stalls out and I hadn't installed any Perl modules so maybe those ones I just installed would do the trick but this person in here if you scroll down they claim that they had to install this uh, Win32 process module and I thought you know what that's it's a module that manipulates Win32 processes so it seems to be probably fairly light and uh, not a bad one to have anyway so regardless I'm going to install it cpan minus i and then we'll just need to change this to the double quote instead of the dash I believe and I've already installed this one as well So like I said, of course, a bunch more stuff should fly by on your screen. So that stuff really should only be necessary, I think, if you want to run the tests. And if I were you and you're just trying to install OpenSSL and you're doing it yourself because it's kind of fun and you don't want to deal with those stupid bloated builds from other people or whatever, that who knows what they've done or done right or wrong with them, uh, then you probably don't even need to run these tests. But... OpenSSL is one of the few programs where 100% of the tests should pass on your system. So I'd say, hey, I'd suggest run those tests because if one of the tests doesn't pass on your system, then that's definitely suspect. But with Perl, when I had installed that, there was a handful of tests that didn't pass, So, which is kind of typical, sad to say, with a lot of programs. But anyway, to run those tests, if you do choose to do so, is nmake test. And that will take probably at least as long as it took to build, but it shouldn't take too much longer. At least I don't think. I've got 11.55 on my clock. I'm sure by the time I come back, I'll forget what time it was. But I'm going to go ahead and pause the video again and let all these tests run, and I'll be back. Okay, so the test finished can't hear myself on my microphone again which is scary but it looks like it's plugged in it better be plugged in and working <laughs> let me try pausing and unpausing it one more time testing testing it shows it's registering on the meter down there so okay so all tests pass successfully and that's that it looks like it took a little over 10 minutes because I was uh, on the browsing the the World Wide Web is what they called it back in last century and I was browsing that this century so that otherwise it would have probably taken just over 10 minutes 
But anyway, those the all test pass thing, that's a good thing. And now it's time to install. I'm tempted to just install as a regular user because I'd done that prefix to that other folder that isn't program files. Yeah, I'll just try it as a regular user and see what happens. So and make instead of test, we're gonna replace that with install. Probably will fail out and say it can't build the folder. Maybe not. Since it's not program files, if your regular user that you're using has write access to the uh, top level C colon backslash root folder or wherever you're installing it, then you should be able to just install as a regular user like what I'm doing right now. Otherwise, what you will need to do while this is installing, I'll show you real quick. You'll need to go to an open another developer command prompt window, but before you click it, right click it and click run as administrator. And then in here you'll need to set your environment again and we'll set this to x64 release and that's really all you should have to do and then don't forget to set the path again to include Perl and I guess NS NASM to be complete path and we'll put the existing path variable there and then we'll tack onto that uh, Perl, the bin folder of Perl, and NASM, and then we'll run Perl version and NASM version just to make sure those are good, they look good, and then we'll go ahead and navigate to the source folder wherever that might be for you, and then uh, if you were building in the source tree itself, that's where you'll go. Otherwise, whatever you named your build directory. And then right here, you do an nmake install instead of as the regular user. That would be the other option is to just run that nmake install right there, right on that line. And that would install as administrator up here. And that, especially if you didn't do the prefix paths, you're going to probably have to do that to install into program files. But as you can see, it looks like I'm being able to successfully install it as a regular user. Here's all the man pages and stuff. This is what takes the most time is to install. What's this? Error, function error. I don't know if that's a big deal or not. We'll see here in a minute. I'm going to go back to that open SSL and then the regular source tree and there was some stuff I think it was install in the install file maybe and what was it install SW or something control F install SW yeah so looks like towards the end of the file down here with the scroll thumb it, you can just search out for make file targets if you want and that should get you down here and then you'll see that there's a uh, you know and make all which I or make all whatever you want to call it I think that just is automatically run and then clean is what I had to run to uh, to backtrack and go back you know if you have to change especially if you have to change configure options and stuff like that you'll definitely want to do a clean before you do that. Um, here's the regular install that we're running right now. But if you don't care about having that the offline documentation, you can just do right here. I believe this should install all the core stuff that you absolutely have to have. This man docs, you're effectively getting that by installing, by doing this regular install. It's going to install this and this is what that is equivalent of. Um, on Windows or actually I should say it's the equivalent of this and this and this HTML docs is basically the equivalent of man docs but it's they're in HTML format instead of the man pager kind of format that is normally on Linux since Windows doesn't usually have a man viewer a manual viewer installed and there's some of the other targets too I tried this one 
on one of those videos that failed and it didn't seem to do anything it didn't really seem to uninstall any of the compo components that may work on the unix linux mac os type systems but it didn't work on the windows one so and on those ones you'll need to have everything configured and built i think built also just the way it is exactly the way it is installed so if you plan on uninstalling out of that system in the future what I usually do is I'll just like zip up right after you do a make install zip up that build folder and save it off somewhere and then when you want to uninstall unzip that build folder and also I imagine the uh, source tree as well if the build folder is separate from that otherwise you'll be zipping them all up together of course and that should work so I just wanted to cover that and I'm going to pause it. This should be done in just a minute or two. Okay. It is done installing. At this point, if you're in an administrator window, you'll want to close that out and go back to your this regular user build window. You only want to be administrator just as long as absolutely necessary or root, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the top level folder and try and navigate into the OpenSSL and there it is it's there we can see that SSL subdirectory that would normally be in program files common files if you didn't add the prefixes and that's what that tree looks like like I said that would be C colon backslash program files or program files x86 backslash common files backslash SSL but we've instead just dumped it in on our regular open SSL tree that way it's not just floating there and we forget about like what did that go with? We have it sort of bound to this build. And then the bin folder, which it's up to you whether or not you want to add this to your path. And then we can type open SSL. Let's type, go back to the folder and type where open SSL. And it doesn't find it. Go back into that bin folder, type it. And there it found it. Just some weird nerd stuff I do. And then I don't think open SSL version, that shouldn't work but what will work is open SSL version and there we can see that's the correct version so now you can run whatever type of like you know generate certificates stuff like that I guess <laughs> whatever you might want to use the open SSL command line for or if you want to use the open SSL libraries you can see those there as well the HTML documentation there's your include and lib folders so if I type explorer and then a dot to rec which represents like you'll see sometimes is there's the dot and the dot dot the dot dot of course represents the path just before this one and the dot represents this directory that will open this directory in explorer and uh, so bin is mostly binary files so they're they wouldn't compress too well in uh, lib is also mostly binary files so those aren't worth compressing this probably isn't a big deal for most people but some stuff I'll go in and you know select includes gonna be like the C style header files if you're gonna wanna do you'd include um, you know open open SSL slash I think that's it right where I forget it's been so long since I did C programming now but this is these are the files if you want to write programs that include the open SSL so you'd have this this include folder you'd make sure and do like command line or make file options or whatever to include this include folder in your include path and then inside of your source file that you're going to include it in you'd include and you'd use the quotes instead of the brackets because it's not a standard include file it's not included with your tool chain right so you'd use the quotes and you do open SSL slash whatever include file you want to include and since that and this here like it's set up like man folders but if you go into it it's actually HTML and then you can click on one and it's set up in the man page style format for people familiar with that which is pretty cool and I'm gonna close that 
go back up a couple and since these two folders are mostly it's like I said they're not a huge deal here because um, they don't take up much space a few megabytes 40 megabytes well slightly significant so what I'm gonna do is I'll click advanced and then I'll uncheck these personally I mean unless you want it indexed for uh, to be able to find it with like your search and your start menu or doing a one of these kind of searches I guess I forget whatever type of content searches you can do I just personally avoid that most times um, compress contents to save disk space excuse me <coughs> and then click OK and then click apply right here and also perform on the subfolders That's weird. Last time I installed this, I thought it was only like maybe 15 megabytes worth of stuff in those folders. So that's kind of interesting. And what this does is it just does a real quick zip style compression on the folders at the low level, at the NTFS, the NT file system level. And Windows just automatically behind the scenes can still they'll turn blue in your explorer if you're not familiar and they'll just automatically uncompress them like that but if you look at how much space they actually take up you can see it's taking up probably about 60 percent of the space it was before so especially on other programs that are really big installs of you know they might take up like hundreds of megabytes or something of text files and that's what's usually good for is plain text style files or HTML or whatever. Include files that will help that. So with that, I think that is that. So now, um, like I said, if you want to, if you are on another type of system, you probably want to back up your build folders. I'm, I would just personally go in and wipe those out now so that I free back up the space. So I'm going to this open SSL and I don't need any of that so I'm going to drop back a folder and just say rmdir and then if we look at the command line options they're those and I'll say quietly get all the subdirectories too and open SSL and that should free up all those megabytes of space that those folders were taken and now open SSL is installed but it's only in the path of this particular command shell instance if you want it in the path of your entire system so that every command prompt invocation you can just type ENV in here and then go down to edit which even no matter what your start menu looks like just click on your Windows menu type ENV and you should get an option to edit system environment variables go in there click environment variables if you need to these ones up here are your user only so you can go there and go down to path where is it right there and double click that and if you're using Windows 10 it will probably give you a nicer editor otherwise I just hit control A and then you can hit like control C or X depending if you want to copy or cut and then open a regular text file editor and just paste it in there edit it as you see fit and then control A X or C or whatever and then come back in here control A to make sure you have it all and then control V to paste it back in and then hit OK to save that newly edited or added or you can just hit end like right here come to the end add a semicolon and put in the paths as necessary I'm gonna cancel so it doesn't save that and then of course if you want it system-wide for every user which if you're unsure you might as well probably just do system-wide same thing here and you can either copy it into a notepad kind of thing or just hit end add a semicolon and deal with it there and you'd want to add um, like if you followed exactly along with me you'd want to add C colon backslash open SSL backslash bin to your path okay and then click OK to back out of all that stuff thanks a lot hope that was worth watching <laughs>